All right, go ahead and have your homework out if you would, please. Your book's open to page six. Had you do page six, numbers one through six, just looking at some place value, making sure we're good to go with that. And then also on page seven, the first six homework questions, basically more of the same. So let's start on page six, numbers one through six. Number one, the three is in which place spot? Luciana? Tens. The tens place. So what is the value of the three? 30. 30. That was filled out for you. That's what they were wanting us to do on the rest of the homework. So now, Luciana, number two, what digit do they have underlined? Thousands. The thousands place. So the value of that digit is actually? On number two, you're looking at number three. I'm sorry, you went down to number three. Thousandths is correct for number three, and it is eight over a thousand for number three. I was looking at number two, which does happen to be the thousands place. What's the value on number two, Luciana? Four thousand. Four thousand. I was like, where did she get eight over a thousand? I'm so confused. You then went down to number three. Let's go to number four, Bryson. Which uh, place of value do they have underlined? Uh, hundreds. The hundreds place, so the value of that digit is? 800. Number five, the one is in what spot? Sam? The one. The millions place. So its value is? One million. Number six, the underlying digit is in which place? Page? Tens. The tenths. And so the value of the one is literally? Tenths. Well, one tenth, right? One over ten would be correct. Look at the next page. Number one on the homework. That three is in which place? Jalen? Number one from the homework, they've underlined that three, which, what's its place value? Um, 100,000. 100,000 is place, so it has a value of? 300,000. 300,000. Number two right next to it, the eight is in which spot, Corey? No, hundred. Hundreds, good, well said. And so its value is? Eight over 100. Eight over 100. Number three, uh, the zero is in which place, Michael? Hundred. Trick question, what's the value of the zero? Zero. <laughs> Zero hundreds. It, there's still no value there. Uh, good job, Michael. Not fooled at all. Number four, the nine is in which place here? Uh, Kirsten? The thousands. The thousands. And so its value is? Nine over a thousand. Well, if it were in the thousandths, it would be nine over a thousand. It's in the thousands, so its value is just? Nine thousand. Nine thousand. There we go. Then number five, that seven is in which spot? Ten thousands. Ten thousands. And so its value is? Seventy thousand. Seventy thousand. There we go. Kind of choked getting it out, but we got it. Seventy thousand. And number six, uh, we've got what place value there, Elaine? Thousandths. Thousandths. Good. Well said. And so its value is? Eight over a thousand. Eight over a thousand. Good. Any questions on place value from yesterday? Any questions at all on place value? All right, another thing that we need to talk about, so again, all review today, nothing new today from what we've talked about in years past, is we want to talk about rounding numbers. If I had um, this number here, uh, let's say uh, 52.418, all right, this is an ugly decimal, and uh, what we don't always want our answers to look like this. For instance, if this were money, money doesn't make a lot of sense with three decimal places, right? Money's supposed to have how many decimal places, class? Two. Now, you'll find other reasons for rounding as you get a little bit older and get into science classes and things of that nature. But for now, just think rounding, if we wanted to round, for instance, to the second decimal place. We only wanted two decimal places. The key is this, that everything after a decimal will either fall off and go away or it'll bump up the next thing. The key is to look at this digit right after the one. Is an eight a big number or a small number? Well, on a scale of one to 10, is eight on the high side or the low side, class? Uh, it's on the high side, right? Basically, five and up is considered high, even though I know five's right in the middle. We consider five and up to be high. Anything lower than five is small. If it's small, zero, one, two, three, or four, it just falls off and goes away if it's after a decimal. If it's bigger than five or five or bigger, it bumps this up. So when I round it off, I'm gonna round it to 52.4, and the eight's gonna bump the one class up to a two. two. And then the eight has served its purpose, it's no longer there. Now, are these the exact same thing, class? No, this is a rounded value, and we'll use this symbol. You know what an equal sign looks like, right? Equal sign means this is what it is. If we make the equal sign squiggly, 
That means it's approximately this. This and this are not equal, they are approximately equal. And so when we round it off, we'd say that this number is approximately equal to 52.42. Alright? That's if we're rounding something after a decimal. Um, what if we had something like um, 3,475 and I wanted to round, let's say, the 3 right here. I wanted to round my thousands digit. Well, I look at the digit right after it. Class, is this a big number or a small number? Small. Does a small number bump it up? No. no. But it also can't just fall off, because if everything falls off, is 3,000 approximately equal, or 3,475, is that approximately equal to three? No. So anything that comes before a decimal, by the way, you don't see the decimal, it's here at the end of the number, anything on this side of the decimal has to become zeros. 3,475 is somewhat approximately equal to 3,000. After a decimal, it can fall away. Before a decimal, we have to change to zeros. Do we remember this from past years? Everyone say yes. This is something I've seen before. Should be. How about this? If we had a 3.8472 and I wanted to round the 8, what digit am I focused on if I want to round the 8 class? I'm looking at the 4, the one right after it. Is 4 big or small class? Small. Small. Does it bump up the 8 to a 9? No. No. So the 4 and then the 7 and the 2, what do they all do? No. They fall off because they're after a decimal. I'll say that 3.8472 class is approximately equal to 3.8. Everything else just falls away. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, there is a little weirdness that can happen sometimes. If I had 120.498 and I wanted to round the 9, I look at what number to tell me how to round the 9 class. I look at the 8. eight. Is the 8 big or small? Eight. Big. So what does the 8 do to the 9? It bumps, bumps it up. But what does a 9 become when you bump it up? Ten. A 10. Can I fit a 10 in one little digit? No. no. So all I do is I write the 0, and the 1 has to carry, and this becomes a 5. five. Now I want you to notice the 8 now falls off now that it's done its job. But I don't let the 0 fall off. Which digit was I rounding? Looking the hundredths place. If I don't write the zero, what does it look like I rounded to? The tenths place. So I will still write the zero. We would say that 120.498 is approximately equal to 120.50. Do we remember all of this from fifth and sixth grade? Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. Turn your textbooks to page three. Turn your textbooks to page three. And talk a little bit about rounding on this page. I'm going to skip all the way down to table A. It's kind of toward the, just below the middle of the page where it says applying rounding rules. Look at the big old number they got there for rule one. They have 4,678.2956. Big old nasty number. And they rounded to the hundreds place. Notice, what digit is in the hundreds place currently? A six. But what comes right after it, class? Looking in your book, seven. a seven. Seven bumps it up. So notice we keep the four, we bump the six up to a seven. The next two digits have to become zeros because they were on this side of the decimal. Everything else just falls away. If we round to the tenths place, well, what's in the tenths place, class? A? Three. Not yet. A two. And what's after the two? A nine, which does what to the two, bumps it up to a three. Are you following along with the box here? Look at the next one. Looking at the original number, we're rounding the thousands digit. What digit is in the thousands place? Five. five. Well, what comes after it? Six. What does a six do to a five? Bumps it, bumps it up. And then because it's after the decimal, again, they fall off. Do we see what we're doing there? Any questions at all? Anyone still a little shaky on rounding? All right, let's go and practice then. Flip over to page six again. I want you to do the box for seven, eight, and nine. Do the box for seven, eight, and nine. You're gonna round to the millions, the hundred thousands, the thousands, and the tens. So you seven, eight, and nine. They've already done the first couple parts of number seven for you. Finish out that box. Go ahead and get started on that.
once you're finished, put your pencil down and sit quietly so that I know that you're finished. Michael's done. Jalen's done. Devine is finished. Mm -hmm. Working quietly. Again, once you're finished, just sit quietly. more seconds to get as much done as you can and then we'll go over these together. about to get some practice reading numbers now, aren't we? We had some little issues with this. Remember the and. Don't use the word and unless you mean a decimal point. So for instance, number seven, they've rounded the number in the millions place to six million. They rounded to the hundred thousands, five thousand seven hundred, or five million seven hundred thousand. For the thousands place, check your answer for number seven, round to the thousands place, five, five million six hundred seventy eight thousand. And to the tens place, 5,678,280 should be our answers. For number eight, what did you get when you rounded to the millions place, Griffin? One million. When you rounded the hundred oh. thousands place, what did you get, Griffin? One million. Five hundred thousand. Perfect. When you rounded the thousands place, Griffin? One million. Four. Four hundred thousand nine. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One million. 498,000. There we go. And when you rounded to the tens digit, what did you get? 1,497,620. Perfect job. How many got all four answers on number eight correct? All right. And then number nine, when we rounded the millions digit, what did we get, Michael? Nine million. When we rounded the hundred thousands place, what did we get, Jalen? Hundred thousand. Um. Nine million. I don't know why I got nine million. All right. Well, what digit is currently in the hundred thousands place? One. A one. Look right after the one. We've got a two. Is that going to bump it up? No. No. So we're going to let everything else just change to zeros because it's all on the correct side of the decimal. So we should get what for our answer? And then your answer there, Jalen. Nine million one hundred thousand is correct. What about the thousands place? Sam, what'd you get for number nine in the thousands? Uh, nine million, uh, Good. Without the end, but uh, correctly said, and obviously on a quiz or test, you don't have to say, you just have to write it, but nine million one hundred twenty-nine thousand. And then for the tens digit, Bryson? Uh, 
Okay. Or 600. There we go. And again, without the end, 9,128,600. Again, it's easier. You don't have to say it on quizzes and tests, I know. All right, questions on 7, 8, or 9. Anyone say, can you show me how you round this way? Any questions? Drop down to the number 10, 11, and 12. Now, now we're rounding primarily to some decimal places. So here's where instead of changing things to zeros, they just fall off. I want you to do numbers 10, 11, and 12 now. Again, still on page six, so not in the homework section, but on the practice section on page six, rounding the decimals. So it's going to actually upgrade here. The thousands place is the nine enough to bump it up. And what are we going to put for the thousands? Another minute to work. Let's take a look at these together. Pencils down, even if you're not finished, that's okay. Let's take a look at these. Number 10, Luciana, when you rounded to the ones place, what'd you get? 15. 15, yeah, I didn't bump it up to a 16. Round to the tenths place, Corey, what did you get? 15.1. Good, the two wasn't enough to bump that up. For the hundredths place, Kirsten? 15.13. Good, or 15.13 is how we read it, because the uh, five was just big enough to bump that two up to a three. And then for the thousandths place, Ben? 
Good, make sure you're staying with me as we're going over these. Now, number 11 was a bit nasty. The first part wasn't, though. You're just right out of the ones place. Shouldn't have had an issue there, Lane. 14. 14, no big deal. Tenths place wasn't too bad either. When we rounded the tenths place, what did we get, Paige? 14.4. 14.4. But that hundreds place was a little weird because the hundreds digit is a nine, and behind it was another nine that bumped the nine up to a ten, which bumped the... What did you get for number 11 for the hundreds place? 14.40. Well, 14.40 yeah. is how we'll read it. There we go. And then what about the thousands place? That one was weird too, Jalen. 14.400. 14 14.400, because the thousands digit was a nine that bumped to a 10, which bumped the nine to a 10, which bumped the three to a four. 14.400, that one was crazy. Did anyone get all the answers on 11 correct? You got all of them. Okay, several of you. Would anyone say, can you show that last one with the thousands? Does anyone need to see it on the board, the thousands digit? You do. Let's take a look at it. So they gave us a 13.39995, right? So the first key is when it says round the thousands, you have to find the thousands. That's right here. And ask yourself, self, what is after? It's a nine. Does it not, what does a nine do to this nine? Makes it a... 10, but all I can do is write a zero, carry a one. Well, that makes this nine into a 10, right? The zero, carry the one. That makes this into a four. I don't have to carry anything now. Keep the decimal, keep the three, keep the one. Does that kind of make sense how you, in a sense, carrying to the next digit? So yeah, kind of weird when you got all those nines in a row right there. Number 12 was an easier one, I think. When we round to the ones digit, what did we get, Michael? Five. 22. The 5 is just big enough to bump it up. How about the tenths place, Sam? What do we get? Okay. 21.5. Good. We run to the hundredths place. Kirsten? 21.51. Good. And then when we round to the thousandths place, Corey? 21.511. 21.511. Good. Questions on rounding? All right, how many say, I, I may have had a little issue first. I think I'm starting to get it now. I know someone's had a little issue starting to get it. We're going to practice it in the homework a little bit later on. For now, I want to talk about addition. Again, I told you nothing new today. Working on addition. Who remembers from years past what we call numbers that get added together? There's a term that we use to refer to numbers that get added. Sam? Well, the process is called addition, but the numbers that are actually being added, Elaine, are called? Add-ins. Add-ins. Uh, maybe uh, mark that term in your textbook. Flip back, I believe it's page three, page four, page three, bottom of page three. You see that term add-ins. Add-ins are simply numbers that get added together. So they're at the bottom of page three. You see a little process? Add-ins are numbers that get added together. And when we get our answer, the answer has a name that we definitely need to know. You must know this term. Do you sense a quiz coming or a test coming where you're going to be asked this? What do we call the answer to the addition problem, Kirsten? The sum. The sum. S-U-M. The sum. Class, what do we call the answer to an addition problem? The sum. The sum. Now, there's one little thing. I don't like adding like this side by side. I mean, I can do it, but I'd rather not. Usually when we add class, we want to stack them on top of each other, right? The key is you must line up place value. Make sense? This is in the ones digit. This is a ones digit. They have to stack. Tens digit, tens digit. They have to stack. Hundreds digit has no friends. So hundreds digit just all by its lonesome. And then we can add. And you should already be familiar with that. Yes, I'm not telling you anything new. All right, then we add. 7 plus 8 class. 15. 15. Write the 5, carry the 1. 1 plus 3? Four. Plus two six. ends up being a six. One plus two plus two. Some of you just added too fast there. That's fine. And nine plus nothing. Nine. So our, what do we call this? The sum. sum is 965. The same thing is true if there's decimals. We have to line up place value. But the decimal makes it easy. As long as the decimals stay lined up, we're okay. Watch. By the way, I see a decimal. I see a decimal. I don't see a decimal. If you do not see a decimal, where is it, class? At the end, it's behind the two. So as long as you keep the decimal end up, you're good. Watch. 576.1. 318.27. You say the seven has no friends. Oh, well. 72. I do not put the seven here. Looking up here, Jalen. I do not put the seven here. This is a tens digit. Besides, the decimal has to line up here. Seven, two. Again, this is all stuff you should have learned in years past. 
Do we remember talking about this? Keeping the decimal lined up, keeping our place value lined up. Now, if you want to, some people like to put in extra zeros. I don't, because mathematicians are, who remembers? Lazy. lazy. Good, Bryson. Good, Griffin. Mathematicians are lazy. I don't want to write extra zeros. Are you kidding me? If I see nothing, I know there's nothing there. So seven is the only digit here. Now, that requires you to be neat. If you can't write neatly, you may need those zeros, okay? But if you can write neatly, the seven is the only thing in its column class. So obviously, when I add, I get seven. 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 One plus two. Three. Three. Don't forget to bring down the decimal. I'm going to go a little out of order here because remember, add ends can be rearranged. I see 2 plus 8 class is 10, ten and then I'll add the 6 because that's easy math, right? I look for 10s when I'm adding. I'm going to carry the 1. Uh, here I see 1 plus 7. Eight. I see another 1 plus 7. Eight. And we know that 8 and 8 is 16. 16. So there's little things. Again, you can rearrange the add ends as you're working with them. And then you're 1 plus 5 plus 3. Nine. 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 Do we remember doing this kind of thing? All right, either on a loose piece of paper, or if you have the handout from yesterday, use the back of the handout. So either get on a loose piece of paper or the back of the handout from yesterday. I want you to set up the last edition problem you see on the chalkboard. Set it up on your paper, work it out. Set up the problem on your paper and work it out. Keep those digits lined up neatly. We have 7.49 plus 8.3 plus 9.245, adding those three numbers together. Those three add ends. We'll see who can have the correct sum when they're finished. Strategy tip, some people like to make sure that the most digits or decimal places is the first number written. And remember, you can go out of order if you want to. Wouldn't hurt to put the 9.245 on the top. And then you can put the 7.49 next and the 8.3 on the bottom. You don't have to do it this way, certainly. Doesn't really make a difference, except maybe it'll help you to keep your numbers lined up more neatly, okay? You're allowed to do it after all, so why not? When our thousands place class, we add to just get five. five. In our hundred thousands place, excuse me, in our hundreds place, we get thirteen. 13. I'm going to carry the one. What do we get here in our uh, tenths place? Ten. A ten, right? The zero carry a one. Here I see ten, ten, ten. and here I see fifteen. 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 Ten and fifteen. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. How many got a sum of twenty-five point zero three five? Excellent questions on addition with decimals. Any questions on that? A bit about addition. All right, subtraction is something else that we need to talk about. Now, subtraction is a few more terms because with addition, everything we're adding class is called an uh, add in. Okay, all the numbers we're adding class are called uh, add ends, and the answer is called the sum. sum. But in subtraction, everything has its own unique name. The first number in the subtraction problem class is called the minuend. The minuend. Say that term? Minuend. Minu minu the second term, who remembers? It goes underneath. That might help us remember there, Michael. Uh, the subtrahend. The subtrahend is the thing that gets subtracted away. Those are important terms, I suppose. The most important term, though, once again, is knowing what we call the answer to the subtraction problem. Bryson? It's called the difference. The difference. Plus, what do we call the answer to a subtraction problem? The difference. Yeah. The difference. And once again, just like for addition, we have to keep things lined up. Subtraction, we have to keep things lined up. Place value. But you can't get to flip it around if you want to. You've got to keep the order they give you. So we'll put the 6,254 on top. We'll make sure that the 96 lines up neatly. Units, digits, and tens digits. Here, we don't have to worry about carrying like we did here. Right? We had to carry from time to time. Here, though, we will occasionally have to borrow. Okay, so just a quick refresher on borrowing because you had a whole summer off. Most of you did not do subtraction problems this summer.
Okay, so let's go ahead and reveal a little bit. Can I subtract four minus six, class? No. 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 Don't fall into the trap, by the way. Some people say, well, I'll just do six minus four is two. You're not allowed to do that. Okay, you have to go in this order. And if you have four dollars and uh, Griffin's like, hey, can I have six bucks? No. You're not being a jerk, you just don't have six bucks, right? Well, there's only four bucks, we can't take six away. So we're gonna borrow. We're gonna borrow from the five. Now if we borrow from the five class, we've knocked it down to a four. four. But really we're not borrowing one, are we? We're borrowing 10, because it's in the tens digit. Now, strategy tip, remember mathematicians are lazy. lazy. The 10 that I'm borrowing gets tacked onto the four I've already got. What's 10 plus four? 14. It is not wrong, looking up this way, Jalen, it is not wrong to cross out the 4 and write a 14 above it. But that's easier. Still 14. Y'all see that? Okay. What's 14 minus 6? 8. Can I do 4 minus 9? No. I couldn't do 4 minus 6. I can't do 4 minus 9 either. So once again, we have to borrow. I'm going to borrow from the 2, make it a 1. one. And then the 1 comes over, we put it right in front of the four that's already there. Don't cross out the four and write 14. Would you be lazy? What's 14 minus nine? 15. Oh, five. five, there we go. One minus nothing. One. And six minus nothing. Six. six. And there's our answer. 6,158 class is our difference. difference. Good, Lucy, I heard you first. Our difference, 6,158. Make sure place is lined up. What if we had a 2,003? Go and do this on your paper, that loose paper that you've got out. Minus 975. Let's work this together on your loose paper. Right off the bat, class, we're asked to subtract 3 minus 5. Can we do that? No. 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 So we go next door. And the guy next door is broke. Oh. So we go two houses down. Guess what? He's broke. We got to go all the way three houses down the street to borrow anything. Right? Not that we live in a day and age where people borrow. How many of you have heard stories of like maybe your grandma, she didn't have some, she went next door to borrow a cup of sugar? I've never gone next door to borrow something. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. It's this day and age we live in, we don't, how many don't even really know your neighbors? It's kind of sad. It's sad that that's the case, but like, yeah, that's the day and age we live in. People don't get to know anybody. Anyway, I digress. We gotta go all the way over here, but here's the deal, class. You cannot borrow that far away. You can only borrow next door. So it's not so much you go three houses down, but you go to the neighbor, he's like, yeah, I got nothing. I'm gonna go next door. He goes next door. He got nothing. So this guy goes next door. We borrow from the two class. We make it a one. one. That one, I put right in front of the zero. I've now got a 10. But wait, remember the whole reason he borrowed was so he could loan to the next guy. So we borrow from the 10, make him a nine. nine. And the one we borrow makes this a 10. 10. But guess what? The whole reason he borrowed was so he could get to the guy next to him. So this 10 becomes a nine. And we put this one right here. Yeah. Now we can subtract, right? And make sure you're doing this along with me. 13 minus 5? 9 minus 7? 9 minus 9? Yeah. 1 minus nothing? One. And there's our answer. Yeah. All right, so when you have zeros in a string, keep borrowing, but keep borrowing one next to the other. Questions on that borrowing? Again, it should be stuff we've learned for years. Just want to make sure we refresh our memory on some things. Questions? Write this one down on that loose paper. Speaking of zeros, let's go with a lot of zeros here. 8,000 minus 4,219. 8,000 minus 4,219. And I need Corey. He's going to be the man of the hour. Corey, walk me through what we got to do here. Uh, you got to... Um Borrow from the eight and make it a seven. Then you make the zero a ten and borrow from the ten and make it a nine. And then you make that zero a ten and borrow from the ten and make it a nine. And then make that zero a ten. Very good. And now we're set up for success. Class ten minus nine? One. Nine minus one? Eight. Nine minus two? Seven. Seven minus four? Three. We're done. Should be good with the borrowing. What about uh, if there's decimals? I'm going to write it this way. Do not copy this on your paper yet. 1020.01, and we're going to subtract away 223.7. Just like addition, you had to have place value lined up. We had to keep the decimal lined up. We're going to make sure that we keep the decimal lined up here as well. At your seat, copy it stacked as opposed to side by side. So rewrite this problem on your paper, but write it as a stacked subtraction problem. Thank you. 
I check your setup, did you keep your decimal lined up like this? Now, the nice thing is, what is one minus nothing, class? One. Ooh, that's great, no big deal. But here again, I can't use the zero, so I'm gonna have to borrow all the way from the two, make it A, one. which temporarily makes this A, Ten. till I borrow and make it A, Nine. which makes this A, Ten. minus seven is three. three. Don't forget to bring down the decimal, hopefully you didn't have minus three is. Six. Can I do one minus two? No. Once again, I gotta, can't borrow here, so we're gonna go all the way here, make the one A, zero, zero. zero. that makes this A, Ten. 10. Oh, shortcut. What if, Instead of looking at this as a 1 and a 0, what if I just looked at this as a 10 already? See that? Look at it as a 10 already because there was nothing else here. Borrow from the 10, make it a nine. 9, and bring the 1 over here. Now I can do 11 minus 2, nine. and 9 minus 2 is 7. seven. seven. How many had 796.31? Several of you did. Now what if this had been reversed though? What if I had something like, write this down, a 542.3, Minus 256.715. Write that on your paper. I can say 1 minus nothing, but I can't say nothing minus 5. Does that make sense? Here's the time where you do have to go ahead and fill in the zeros. I know, I'm lazy too. I don't want to either. But here you got to, so that you can do your borrowing. We'll borrow, borrow borrow so we can do a little bit of subtraction here. Go ahead and finish out this problem on your paper. Finish out that problem on your paper. And for those who can read my writings, that was not particularly neat. How many got 285.585 for your answer? Excellent. Well, look in your textbooks now at uh, page six. Drop down to page number six. There at the bottom of the page, I want you to do numbers 18 to 23. 18 through 23. Now notice they've all been written side by side. You're going to have to rewrite them so they're set up vertically. At your seats, 18 to 23, get started. Again, you may want to do these on loose paper. There should be a little room, though, for you to do them in your book if you want to.
Want to double check, make sure you set up your addition problems correctly. You can check the board, make sure you got the digits lined up. And number 20, they got some weird decimal alignment there. So look at the board if you need to on number 20. Look at how we got to keep the decimal point lined up. And they made that one a weird one. For sake of time, bell's about to ring. Check the answers you got done. Even if you didn't finish all six of them, that's okay. Check the ones you got done. How many got every problem that you did correct? All the ones you got to were correct. All right, several of you. Any questions on the ones we missed? You can see the work up here, but are there any questions? Say, I missed this one. I got this other answer. I'm not quite sure what went wrong. Any questions at all on this assignment? All right, go take out your homework assignment, Pat. Go take out your homework assignment pads. Make sure you copy the assignment down carefully. All right? It's a little different from sixth grade, right? Sixth grade, it was just do the homework that's in the back of the book. Seventh grade, the homework, you got to pay attention to what I'm assigning. Make sure you're careful to copy it down and careful to complete what you are assigned. So there's a little bit of an adjustment getting to seventh grade. For homework, you're going to do page six, the page we were just working on, numbers 13 through 17. Stay with me. Page six, numbers 13 through 17. Then on page 7 in the homework section, you're going to do 7 through 14. So six, 13 through 17 on page 6. On page 7, 7 through 14. Make sure you copy down both parts to the assignment. Make sure you do both parts to the assignment. We'll check that tomorrow. One more time. Page 6, numbers 13 through 17. And page 7, numbers 7 through 14. All right, have a wonderful rest of your day. And you are dismissed.